So the title that I chose for our Bible study this morning, you can see on the screen here, Remember, Reclaim, Rekindle, Renew, Revive. And these are all words that are taken from the RMG webpage. But I added another one, Repent. The theme for our conference comes from 2 Timothy 1.6. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. But the passage that was chosen for the conference for this morning is Mark 1, 9 through 15. And let's just go ahead and read that one more time. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, tested by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So I regret to inform you that Mark and Mark's Jesus might have a different theme in mind for the 2023 rostered ministers gathering. Repent. Now, don't misunderstand, there is nothing wrong with rekindle. To rekindle is to kindle up a dormant fire, to revive, to excite, to stir up, to quicken one's powers. I like that one. And look at all of these synonyms. Reanimate, recharge, regenerate, rejuvenate, renew, resurrect, resuscitate, revitalize, revive, revivify, Rewake, rewaken. Whatever you have come here for, it just might be something on this list. What, what is resonating with you and why? Why now? What is drawing your attention? What is tugging at your soul? What is your deepest need? for these days. But it seems that Mark's Jesus has something to say to the author of 2 Timothy. So don't be surprised over the next couple of days if the heavens get ripped apart, you are possessed by the Spirit, thrown into the wilderness, then asked to repent. Did anybody come to Phoenix with that hope in mind? Because when God chose to be among us in Jesus, heavens and curtains, boundaries and borders were not opened so as to be conveniently closed once again, but torn apart. 
We don't get to let God out for a while and then gently suggest God go back to where God belongs. God is on the loose. Ripped apart. For Mark, I guess when you leave here, you can't be the same. You won't be able to mend or sew things back together again. The tear is always there. So it's something to ask ourselves over the next couple of days. What what needs to be ripped apart, forever changed in your life, in your ministry, in your church, in our church? Because we have tried, right, as individuals and as church with a lot of mending and a lot of pretending to go back to normal. But there's no, there's no going back to life before a global pandemic. There is no going back to life before the death of George Floyd. There is no going back before rights were removed and the marginalized refused. There is no going back to life before the cross. There is no going back to life before an empty tomb. Now it would be one thing if there was just a tear in the heavens. Maybe, maybe we could manage that somehow or, or some way. But no, <laughs> that's just the start of it. Translations try and protect us from the spirit and perhaps they should. For the Spirit is not alighting on Jesus or landing on Jesus or resting on Jesus. She's not a a little dove perched delicately on our shoulders, whispering encouragements. No, the Spirit, the Spirit is in us. It settles in for good. The Spirit descended like a dove, not upon Jesus, but into Jesus, and then literally threw him into the wilderness. And so, according to Mark, baptism is not so much about dying and rising, but about possession and expulsion about wilderness and testing, about holding on desperately to your identity and your belonging and your belovedness, all the while surrounded by those wild beasts. And I have a feeling that might be a pretty good description of ministry these days. Unless we think we have time to ponder or wonder or consider, time to relax and refresh, Mark has something different in mind once again. Immediately. There is an urgency about the good news that that I am not sure we have fully realized, fully embraced. What is that urgency now? What gospel will we preach? Will we embody a prophetic homiletic, knowing that, as Will Willimon says, the first prophetic move is tears? So will we give in to those tears, 
to be able to preach the divine pathos, the, the heart of God that yearns for restoration and redemption. Ah, <laughs> more, uh, more, more words to add to the list. You see, the, the good news of God can't seem to wait. Isaiah knew that. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might. His arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The good news, your God is here. Your God is here. Or also from Isaiah. Isaiah knows a few things. How beautiful upon the mountains are your feet, you messengers who announce peace, who bring good news, who announce salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. You see, Mark didn't make up the gospel. Neither did Jesus. God was about gospeling way before Jesus came along. Isaiah is preaching to the exiles in Babylon. What do they need to hear? This is urgent proclamation for a hopeless people. So what is then the good news? Your God is here. Your God reigns. We may not see it, but God is here. We may not recognize it, but our God reigns. Now, let's be honest. This is good news for some, not such good news for others. The others who have God in a box so small, God is barely recognizable. The others who claim God as their own with their unchecked ideas of God's heavenly home. Your God is here, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Or do we act as if God is still carefully contained in a heavenly carton of our ideological, denominational, and theological making? Do we want God here? Or would we rather have God mind their own business? Do we believe our God reigns or, or do we give in to predictions and polls, trends and statistics, all the while giving up on abundance and steadfast love? The kingdom of God has come near. And guess what? According to the Greek, it's already here. There's not much we can do about it. Do we see it? If we can't, why not? What is clouding our view? What is preventing us from seeing those vast vistas of God's reign? Which is why we need to repent. Now, we want repentance to be regret or remorse. We want repentance to be penitence 
or amends. Often it's a lot easier to do that than that refocusing that repentance demands. Ah, (laughs) another word to add to our list. Refocusing. Because repentance means a change of perspective, a dead reckoning, if you will. Not of our sins, but of our blinded perspectives. Not of our faults, but of our failings to view people as God does. Not of our worthlessness, but in the end, our refusal to acknowledge our worth, especially when it comes to proclaiming the gospel, your worth when it comes to proclaiming the gospel. Do you see it? Do you see it? But notice that there's no repentance without believing. Mark 1.15, now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The good news, our God is here, is surrounded by repent and believe and keep on believing. And maybe that's why we are here. Maybe that's why you are here. Because we can't believe on our own. We can't believe on our own. We need each other. Our God is here. People of God, say it with me. Our God is here. Let's try that again. Our God is here. Amen.